Hello students, welcome to the third period of Delhi Sultanate. This period, our learning objectives will be 40. Uh, the Chahal Ghanis, Giyajuddin Palban, Expansion of the Empire from Garrison Town to Empire. The 40 or uh, the Chahal Ghani was the system of a novel introduced by Iltamash in India during the Mamluk rule in India. So, they used to be the cabinet of the ministers of the Sultan. These 40 or the noblemen used to guide India, the Sultanate, Sultan, on various issues. He used to advise the Sultan and help the Sultan in the administration. But after the death of Iltamash, the group assumed a great power in its hand. They wanted to install a puppet on the throne that they could control. It was the Chahal Rani who installed Razia Sultana as a princess, but later on, Razia Sultana proved to be very effective administrator. So, the Chahal Rani saw the power slipping from their hands. So they conspired against the Razia and they outcasted the Razia from the throne and ultimately Razia was assassinated outside the Delhi. So there was no work worthy successor for the Razia and all the successors were lacking in the ability. It was a period of disorder and confusion when this Nasruddin Muhammad, a younger son of Iltamash, was appointed to the throne by the noblemen in 1246 Common Era. But Nasruddin was very young and he was not experienced. So, Giyazuddin Balban, his minister, took advantage and began to control the affairs of a state. Nasruddin was a very kind man. He used to spend most of his time in the um, masjid praising Allah. So he had paid very least attention to the administration. And after the death of Nasruddin, the Palban's way to succeed him was cleared because Nasruddin was not having any son who can succeed him. So Giyazuddin Balbani finally ascended the throne in 1266. So, with his accession, the struggle between Sultan and the Turkish chief came to end. Yazuddin Balban himself was a noble. First thing he did was to abolish the nobles, to abolish the system of Jahalgani, because he was aware of the fact, the power that Jahalganis have. He claimed that the king or the emperor is actually God's representative on earth, which is said to rule. So, for this reason, nobody no common man or no noble man could question him about his authority. Other people only listen to the authority because God has chosen Balban to rule and others to obey. This was the thinking which was circulated by the Balban during his empire. He spread his empire. Garrisons are the fortified settlements with the soldiers. So this is the part of the land which was governed by the Sultan. So the revenue to the Sultan was obtained from the trade and tribute of plunders in the beginning. But what Sultan did, Sultan only controlled only garrisons till now. Sultan rarely controlled the hinterland of the cities till now. The hinterlands are the nearby jungle where robbers used to Hill. What what used to happen? These robbers used to come to the garrison town and they used to loot the citizens from the garrison town and they used to then fly away in the jungles. So Balban did first thing he cleared the jungles in which robbers used to be. Balban also built forts to protect the road. He also constructed new roads. He bought Afghan mercenaries and soldiers 
and awarded them land in order to increase the trade, in order to increase the business, in order to increase the revenue which can be obtained from trade. Balbun has cleared his jungles. Those jungles were then awarded to the peasants where the agriculture could be practiced and again the revenue of the state will increase. So it is very good administrative reform by the Balban. He has also led other administrative reforms such as he planted spice everywhere in all departments of government. All noblemen were spies. Even the uh, kids, children of the nobles were also spied. Everyone had a right and duties. It was fixed by the uh, Sultan. Even the slaves too have the duties and rights. There is one interesting uh, episode from the Balban time that one of the noble called as Hebat Khan has ill treated the slave. And the Balban has punished the Habat Khan for ill treating the slave. So here you can see the Balban is actually punishing his own nobleman to give the dignity to the slaves. So everyone in his time was having right and duties. So after the death of Balban in 1287, it has led the first fresh disturbance. There was widespread turmoil in the empire for succession of the throne. So there was uh, internal rebellions and the uh, foreign invasions uh, in the uh, in the Sultanate. This declined the Mamluk by the death by the death of Balban. Mamluk this, this, this dynasty was declined. The reason being first the death of Balban. There was disturbance and turmoil in the Sultanate. There was invasion by the foreign Mongols and the internal revolutions. To look, to look over the Mamlu dynasty, it was established by Kutubuddin Ebak and his son-in-law Iltamash ascended the throne. He elected his daughter Razia Sultana as the Sultana of Delhi Sultanate. After the assassination of Razia Sultana, it was Nasruddin Muhammad and then it was the Yazuddin Balwar. To look over the rulers of the Mamlu dynasty, Mr. Buddin Ebak founded the Mamlu dynasty, but he died in an accident in 1210. Iltamash became the ruler. He died but appointed his daughter as the Sultan. She was nominated, Raja Sultana was nominated as a Sultan and later overthrown by the Chahal Ghanis and was assassinated by her. By her citizens. After the Sultana in 1246, it was Nasruddin Muhammad who ascended the throne, but with the death of Nasruddin Muhammad, Giyazuddin Balban ascended the throne. This map shows you the span of Mamluk dynasty from 1206 to 1219 Common Era. Now, thank you for being with me for this Delhi Sultanate slave dynasty. We will look the uh, Khaljis in the next period. If you have any doubt, feel free to comment on this video and please don't forget to subscribe this video. Also put the bell icon so that you will receive the latest upload on my channel. Thank you.